hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king and today i'm gonna to be giving you part three of what if naruto was the legendary neglected uzumaki part three guys remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual share this to all of your friends in social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto was neglected and lost everything over an anime making 2 and stay tuned for a new episode coming over and making 3 which i do hope that you guys will enjoy and if you're new yes you heard all of those correctly i indeed have three channels anime making anime making 2 anime making 3 which i post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy so go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the anime making family and enjoy each and every one of them so yeah without further ado what do you say begin this new episode start the intro So the last time we left off, as Naruto came home, as Yoshino decided to push him a bit further by saying how disappointed that she was. As the news had spread about what happened at the academy, as Naruto was already feeling terrible with himself, and she just made it even worse. As Naruto's mind was set up, his vow had been made, he will never ever be humiliated like that ever again. Even if you have to become as strong as a Bejos, you will never ever be humiliated like that. So with that, he went towards Aizumi for help. As she brought Naruto inside of the library, there he saw marvelous things, but he couldn't do it all. Yes, because it was just so much of it. But she might be able to help him, as she found something that would be helpful, and that was the Shadow Clone technique. After that, a couple months passed. As Naruto has been training non-stop with the Shadow Clone technique to the point where his head has been pain in him because he's been using so much clones as in the time span he has grown about 2 or 3 years because of the amount of clones that he used as Naruto was using his fire affinity that world around him as he had really grown over the past couple of months skills everything that he has been learning at school he Dressed back in the background and seeing that he started to do some amazing things, people thought that it was just a fluke that it actually defeated him on the first day. So Naruto played the part that he should play as he smiled towards the others and he waved towards the girls making them squeal. Whenever he did that they left him alone as he wasn't really interested in all of that he just wanted for people to not know that he was a clone. Yes, as Naruto has been attending the academy as a clone the entire time. While the real Naruto was in a barrier in the forest of death training, as Danzo wanted entry but he could not. As Danzo decided to hold Aizumi as, well, capture. As Naruto came out, as Naruto put on the coldest expression that could shock a living grown man, well, the Uzumakis would have his head for that if they hurt her. As Danzo knew that it would be really dangerous to go up against the Uzumakis right now, especially with their foe in Jutsu. Fuin Jutsu that can have the Byakan and Sharingan non-existence. It was then that Fukaku came to talk to Minato. As things were working well so far, the clan had saw that Minato was on their side. He was making sure that everyone lived comfortably in Konoha. As Fukaku outright told him that he could train his son for him. Seeing that Minato didn't have the time. Minato knew that he was kind of neglecting Ruto badly. As he felt it in his heart. But he didn't know what to say now. Kushina didn't know what to say either. Seeing that she could barely talk to her son. As she just didn't know what to ask him or say to him. It was just awkward. As Naruto hasn't even been there. He has been gone every single time. As he's been focused on his training recently. As Minato was going to talk to him. Though. He just needed time. Time passed after that. As Fukako realized. That Minato was not taking the approach. So he figures that he should. As he told Itachi to make friends with Naruto. And Itachi was going to do that, as Itachi sought his father had hopes for him to become 
Hokage. That would really help the Uchiha clan. Yes, a lot. As Itachi would want to see how this friendship would go between him and Naruto. After all, the both of them were doing the same things, using clones. But Naruto has been using it from a long, long time now. He hasn't even attained the academy that his father told him for a very, very long time. As that made Itachi quite impressed, he would have to find out more about the redhead. So yeah guys, those bits can last left off you guys can switch across the place and check it off yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? Let's begin this. At the Uzumaki compound, you've certainly taken a shine to your little freedom, said Yoshino, as she walked over as Naruto was in the kitchen, eating his dinner alone. Freedom is meant to be enjoyed, said Naruto. Really, he was feeling much older than he was. Call it the consequence of using so much clones. Through the entire day, only taking breaks to replenish his chakra by meditating. Or is it perhaps wrong to enjoy this illusion, he said. You're growing. That's good, said Yoshino. Don't bother to go to the academy tomorrow. Why? Although he had nothing better to do and his clones attended the academy, he wouldn't just do it because she said so. Oh, question me now, are we, she said. He did not respond to that, he just continued to eat his meal. The best choice to deal with her was just not to respond to what she was saying. He was willing to play the ignorant card in her. So as long as he get away with it, the Hayugas would be here tomorrow to conduct business. You will be here with your mother to negotiate whatever they want to negotiate with her. This will be a part of your training on how to handle and negotiate business. Did my mother request my presence, said Naruto. Wear something noble and do not embarrass the client in front of those damn Hayugas, said Yoshino. Do you understand me? As she skipped over his question. As Naruto wanted to ignore her like how she ignored him, but she wouldn't leave him alone if he did. I will be on my best behavior, Obasan he said. Yoshino did not respond. She merely turned to leave, but Naruto spoke as she stopped. Remind me again for me to become clan head. I will either have to reach Jonin or the age 18, correct? Those are the only terms and nothing left behind, he asked. As far as I know, said Yoshino, don't think it will be a shortcut to it. You can't do anything as you are. It will take more years or be brutalized by Danzo to become Jonin quickly. But of course, if you get anywhere near that man, you will lose all of your privileges. As Naruto turned towards her with a smile, if you keep on using that against me, it will lose value really quickly. Besides, being head clan was an agenda. As if he became Joni, he could do whatever he wants and she wouldn't have to stick her damn nose into it. I wouldn't be so sure of that boy, she said as she walked away. After that, Aizumi walked in the room and sat across the table from Naruto. He looked at her before we looking back down. He spoke. Does the old hag scare you that much? That you don't want to cross paths with her? She can be brutal sometimes, Aizumi said. She mostly blamed me on your lack of manners and absence, seeing that I'm your guardian. So I rather avoid her when I can. Naruto nodded. Everyone will be most happy if the dead god that forgot to take her soul would take her now. He earned a look from Aizumi, but he shrugged. Are you well? He asked. Aizumi nodded. But not thanks to you, Naruto-sama. Hm. He wouldn't have hurt you, said Naruto. He was just testing things. If he had done anything, preparations for his execution would have been in order. But I'm glad that you're okay, said Naruto with a smile. I was afraid that you'd be shaken. If you really cared, you'd have made sure I was okay, she said. Don't expect too much from me, Aizumi-chan. Besides, if I showed that I cared, he wouldn't have hesitated to do it again to get what you want from me. And I also refuse to believe that you were that defenseless. Our clan may not be made of powerful shinobis, but killing us is not easy, and we aren't that defenseless, despite appearance. Aizumi nodded as she knew that very well. I didn't make things difficult because I know that you'll be that way. My mind did slip that you'd probably fight. That would have put you in danger and I would have fought. Getting into a fight you know you can't win is rather suicidal, he said. I know I'm powerless, that's why I hide behind the mask. That is why I push myself in training. I wish to change that, he said. Because when we have power, we can look down on those who try to put themselves above us. In any case, you don't have to come to me anymore. I will use other means to feed myself. Answer me nodded. Why aren't you shaking though? Was it a small thing? Not at all. You are basically held for a ransom. I just made it look like you were nothing to me. Yet holding you or harming you would be great danger. From what I heard, that man isn't stupid. So I knew that you would do the right thing. I won't have training tomorrow. So, I will take that time to rest my body. To get a sword and stop my weapons. He then paused. He stood up and left the table. I saw me blink. Really, Naruto Sama? She said. But Naruto had already turned away. There was something at the entrance that had him... Focus, it was his father. The man was smiling nervously, like he was trying to propose to a girl that he liked. Really, he looked like he was about to fidget when the eyes of Naruto Uzumaki met with his. Father, said Naruto as he smiled before Tokagi. 
Minato looked towards his son, Naruto. How was your day, he said. Eventful, said Naruto. Okay, said Minato, silent once again as Naruto kept on smiling, waiting for his father to speak once again. I wanted to talk to you, but we can talk tomorrow after the meeting with Hayuka. He said rather quickly, but Naruto heard every word. Naruto nodded before he looked towards Aizumi. Good night, Aizumi-chan, he said. As he walked past his father, after Naruto left, Minato released a long breath that he didn't even know that he was holding. He then looked towards Aizumi. How is he? Good. He is doing well in the academy, but you must know that already, she said. After all, he was Hokage. No doubt the senses of the academy reported to him. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he seems well, said Minato. Thank you for everything. I haven't been much of a parent, but he has you. I am just feeling my... Requirement, Fotokai Hisama, she said, trying to lower her role. But the words stung Minato. He also had a responsibility toward his son and he was failing to deliver those. At least some of us are, he said, as he thanked her once again and left the room. The next day, what can you do on your own, Naruto sama said Aizumi, as she buttoned up the noble cloak that Naruto was wearing. Really, he couldn't even put on the damn things nicely on his own. Train, eat, bath, said Naruto. His mind was on something else. He was going to be suffocating, sitting in the same space as the emotionless Hayugas. He hated the formalities that he would be forced to follow. Then again, his mother wasn't good at those either. But just because of that old woman, Yashino. As Naruto wondered, when will she kick the bucket? Life would be really good when she did so. When are you going to learn to do other things yourself? What is going to happen when you're alone? You can't even live on your own because you can't make the simplest of meals that other kids your age can do. I do not have to worry about mundane things when you can do them. You're the guardian. I have more important things to focus on, he said. Aizumi stared at him, he said like that. He said her work was mundane. How could he say it with a straight face and still expect her to take it? No, as she's thinking about it, he probably didn't even care about her thoughts on the matter. He merely stated what he thought. She sighed. My work is very important, she said. There. You look like the fine ear of the Uzumaki clan. I don't look like, said Naruto. I am the ear of the Uzumaki clan. Though his words didn't seem joyous about it at all. He seemed to view it as a burden more than anything. But Aizumi was going to comment on that. She was not. I'm all done, she said. She stood up. As Naruto turned towards the mirror, what's left? A smile, he said. As he smiled himself. You know, sometimes I'm worried about your sanity, Aizumi said. Who did that kind of thing? He was looking at his weird smile in the mirror. And he called it perfect. I will not see you until later. Have my reading materials when I get back. He said as he walked away. As she knew what that meant, even if he does see her while he was in the compound, he was going to ignore her until later. He was very good at ignoring other people and pretend like they didn't even exist. As Naruto left his room and walked towards the main room, both of his parents were there waiting for him. He merely smiled as he greeted them. Mother, father, he said. Hey Naruto, said Minato. You look nice. Did I submit that for you? When Naruto nodded, Minato cut a short laugh. We probably spoiled you a bit too much, he said. Then again, you were our joy. Still are, he said, as he quickly corrected himself. As Naruto simply ignored that last statement, I wasn't expecting you to be present for the meeting. No more work overload these days. But there's still work, said Minato. This is part of work, he said, as he felt a bit unnerved by the look that Naruto was giving him. It wasn't that it was a scary face. It was a smile, but Minato knew. There was nothing to smile about. Naruto should not be smiling at him, but he was. I see, said Naruto. Then you're acting. As a Fortikage right now. I'll be outside, he says as he walked past them. Once Naruto was outside, Minato turned towards his wife. Well, that was disappointing. But not as bad as I expected to go. What did you expect, said Kushner? Him to ignore me, he does that so well, said Minato, with a sad smile. I'm happy that he is still talking to me, though. I did make some time to talk to him after the meeting. Kushner returned a sad smile. As long as Yoshino doesn't show up, everything should be fine. I really do miss him. I want him back in our lives again, she said. We will try, he says. He pull. Kushner close. Does Naruto not get along with Yoshino? Not at all, Kushner said. You know how hard Yoshino is. And Naruto likes things his way. He doesn't like being bossed around. I have seen how he smiled at her. It's unhealthy. Perhaps we should talk to her about backing off slightly from him, said Minato. He doubt that conversation would go well, though. That woman was just so stubborn. And Minato didn't like her one bit. No need. From what I was able to gather, she has been staying away from him. She only go to him when she has to. And what makes it possible is that Naruto is hardly home these days. This has become a motel for him. Before Minato could say anything, Naruto came back inside. They said the Hayugas have arrived. Minato nodded, come here. As Naruto looked towards his father, before walking over, the man touched his shoulder and they vanished in a yellow flash. They appeared at the clan gates where Hayashi and an old man was waiting for them. As Kushina took the lead, welcome to the Uzumaki compound, Hayashi-san. She only greeted the clan head respectfully. I'm sure you know her son, she said. She pointed towards Naruto. Hayashi did not respond to the smile. His expression was blank. Yes, I'm quite aware of him. 
I've been hearing good reports from one of my own, who is in a class with him. As Luther Blink, he was surprised. There was a Haiga in his class. Four months he was there and he honestly did not know that there was a Haiga there. Why the surprise? It seems like some of it leaked on his face. The old man asked as the group made their way inside the Uzmak compound. As Naruto smiled pleasantly, this is the first time I've heard that there's a Haiga in my class. I hadn't noticed. I actually seemed very offended by that. But then again, said Naruto, I didn't know my sensei's name until recently. As he stopped talking, as Hayashi looked towards him, he hadn't liked how Naruto spoke. For someone who has garnered as much attention as Itachi Uchiha, your attitude is disappointing. It seems like ignorance is truly bliss to the young ones. But instead of not saying anything, Naruto nod in agreement. Well said. Perhaps my attitude is disappointing. I will apologize for that. You see, I have this habit of ignoring trivial things that doesn't really matter or are not really important. As Minato wanted to laugh, kids. Hayashi said that because he just thought that Naruto's attitude was disappointing. But to say that, well, he ignored trivial things. That meant that the Hayuga in his class did not, well, it was important. Nothing about the Hayuga. Nothing further was said as Hayashi was not going to argue with that child. It was even worse because his parents did not stop him. And a child has never talked to him like that before. It was disrespectful. But he kept his mouth shut because he came here for help. And he was the one that started it. But he wouldn't tell anyone. As the Hayugas looked around the compound, it was a rare sight. No one outside the compound could see inside. The place had appeared to be like a forest. Because of the Genjutsu seal that surrounded the compound. As they made their way towards the reception room. A room that was designed for this exact same reason. As Kushina stood at a small podium, before sitting down, rather uncomfortable, she wasn't used to this kind of thing, she didn't like it at all. Hayashi and his companion sat facing her, as Naruto and Minato stood on the side. As part of his training, and seeing that he's the ear of the clan, he will only observe. Naruto won't be saying anything, said Kushina. The Hokage is here for your request, that he be a witness. Hayashi nodded, as he looked towards Minato. I hope you can remain neutral and fear, even though this might affect the future of your son. As the clan, man beside him nodded. Of course, said Minato. I will appreciate this, said Hayashi. There's a lot of things that we have to discuss. And I truly hope we come to our agreement in some of them. I am willing to comprise if that is a reason for our agreement to be made, Hayashi said. I have two questions before we get to that though. How deep is your relationship with Uchiha's? And why is your library so warded with seals? I cannot answer the first. But the second, it is because it's our library. And we have to protect it. It has things that you cannot find in the village or any other library. It's our treasure. That was how far near to listen. As it's mind completely ignore everything else. Really, he could have just gone to the training ground. And learned things. Then waste his time being here. He didn't even send a clone to do anything because he wanted to rest. He had other business to handle today. He needed to get his weapons created and it was a business meeting with Itachi. Perhaps he could gain something by associating with the Uchiha's. Naruto. The redhead looked at his mother. There was no way he could ignore that chilling voice that was calling him. She must have noticed that he wasn't listening to everything. He looked up she was standing in front of him, her hands on her hips staring at him. Yes mother, he said. That smile once again. Kushna steal her nerves. Go wait for us in the main room. We're going to see Hayashi out, she said. Naruto nodded, the meeting was already over. He had really not heard anything. If there was anything, his mother would deal with it. And a part of him just couldn't find it in him to care. As Naruto made his way towards the couch in the living room. As he realized what was going to happen, for the first time in months, the both of them were going to sit down and talk to him. He was not excited by it, it made him frown because he was not really looking forward towards it. They arrived rather quickly, perhaps Minato simply teleported them back to the house. As the both of them sat across from him, all of a sudden there was an air of nervousness. As Naruto spoke first, Karen-chan asleep, he asked. She's with Aizumi, said Kushina. I hope it does not end up being her job. I'm not sure I want another guardian, said Naruto. Of course not, Kushina said. Aizumi will always be there for you. She's yours alone. Glad to know, said Naruto as he gave them a look to say. So? Minato looked towards Kushina before looking back towards Naruto. We haven't really been parents to you. We want to change it. We want to make it up to you. But we first want to know, Kushina said. Do you resent us? No. He shook his head. I'm disappointed. Really disappointed. Immensely disappointed. Bitterly disappointed. But I do not resent you, he says he got to his feet. But as he tried to leave, Kushina grabbed him. She gave him a pleading look. She was begging him to stay. It was the first time she made her look to him. But he didn't want to stay. He had an alternative that would suit them both though. I will join you both for dinner tonight, he said with a smile. 
As long as you show up, both of them flinched when those words left his lips. Well, enjoy the rest of the day, mother father. Kushner turned towards Minato as he left. If we mess up this time, we won't get another chance. Minato nodded. I'll be sure to return for dinner. I got to return to work, he said. See you later. With that, he gave her a quick kiss as he vanished. With Naruto, after exiting the Uzumaki compound, Naruto entered the hidden village. Really, being in the Uzumaki compound felt like you were in a different village all entirely. Well, it was better that way. They were hidden from a lot of villagers and things were quieter, a lot, lot quieter in there. As a shadow was still there that was over his shoulders. The ignoring, the gaze that didn't seem to look at him. He had to do more. But Naruto wasn't some power hungry fool that would just go everywhere for power. Perhaps if Danzo hadn't said that he would make him stronger and give him more power, he would have taken up his offer. But hearing that, he was going to take that offer at all. He wanted to learn his own computer style that would be unique to him. Progress was already there. His sweat and hard work would make it better. He could see it. Not even a year had passed and he has already improved greatly. Beyond expectations already. What would he become in two more years? What he would become in a set? He stopped as he heard a bell. As he turned his head towards the Higurashi weapon shop, he finally arrived towards the destination. As he walked inside, kunais of all kind, but he didn't want those, he wanted a blade. As he wandered into a section of swords, as he saw swords of all kind, the weaponry was amazing, beautifully even. He could see himself owning a stash like that in his room. It's not very often you see someone your age looking at such swords with such eyes. A voice behind Naruto said, as Naruto did not even turn to face a man, there is no one like me, he said. The man merely chuckled at hearing that. You're certainly right about that. There is only one, Naruto Uzumaki. As Naruto finally turned to face a man, your father is a customer of mine. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a sword. Not as short as a Nodiki though. Titana, that is made of strong, chakra conductive metal. Not a material that would break two or three times after usage. I want a hard material that will not disappoint me, said Naruto. If it can be repaired after a while, it will be fine. Hisaraki looked at Shinobi for a long minute. He wasn't a Shinobi, he was a boy. Yet the way he spoke, how long exactly he decided to test? Should it be light or heavy? Should it be a straight sword? You're the expert. I'm sure that you can make something that will be good for me in length, said Naruto. I want something light, straight and double edged. As he tilted his head to the side, when can I expect it? The man laughed. In a month, he said, I have to order the material. A lot of it since. It will require repairs. You do know that a weapon like that will cost. Naruto nodded. Price. It's not an obstacle. I would return in three weeks to check the progress and try out the samples, he said. We will discuss the payments thereafter. It shall be done, his archer said, as he held out his right hand. As Naruto reached and took the man's hand, as the both of him shake hands. I look forward to seeing you as a regular, Uzumaki. Time skip. Itachi had been almost disappointed when Naruto did not show up at the academy. This was the day that he agreed that they would walk home. As he was concerned by Naruto no show, the redhead was the one to miss classes, even though it was a waste of time. He was always one to show. Their sensei didn't seem bothered by the absent, so probably it was known. Perhaps something to do with his clan. After all, he was a clan heir. His father also took him away from the village, sometimes to learn things about being clan heir of the Uchiha clan. But if the redhead didn't know about this, he would have said something yesterday. As Itachi reached a gate, he saw Naruto lean up against the gate as he was wearing that exact same look. That he were in class when Sensei was teaching. But the academy didn't have any anything for people like them. They were just going there for the formalities. As Itachi reached Red he spoke. I thought I would just have to catch you another time. I said that I would walk with you, said Naruto. As the both of them start to walk. So, what is your agenda behind this request? You don't look at like the one to make friends or that sort. Itachi raised the eyebrow at that. What makes you think that? You don't even observe me enough to tell. Even the other one can tell that you don't try to make friends because you ignore everyone. Including the teacher. Hmm. You watch me a lot, huh? But should you be the one to say, said Naruto. Maybe not, said Itachi. What happened? Naruto said nothing as he simply looked at Itachi. It took Itachi a while to realize that he was just waiting. For him to answer his questions. I do have a friend, Itachi said. And I think we will help each other grow. If we get along. We are of the same age group. And both. On our own level in our generation. Can learn something from each other. Plus, my father thinks it will be best for me. Naruto said nothing on that subject. He just spoke about Itachi's earlier question. There was a meeting with the Hayugas at my compound. As a part of my training, I had to be there. Itachi remembered what his father said. There's still some time. What do you say to a sparring session? I would like to understand you a bit more. That is fine, said Naruto after a while. Itachi was shocked that the redhead agreed. He didn't think he would. 
why he had to ask. And so he has been bugging me to make a friend. And I think that testing myself would show how far I've improved. And you won't annoy me with things I don't want to hear. And we're in the same position, said Naruto. Then why didn't you agree to it at the academy? I had my reasons, said Naruto. Follow me to my training ground, said Naruto as he took off. He touched a blink. He shook his head as he went after Naruto. Time skip. When Naruto had returned back home from his eventful time with Itachi, he found his mother and father as they were there. He was a bit late seeing that he had spent some time throwing around kunas and shurikens with Itachi. It was somewhat challenging, but he did nothing heavy lifting, so he was not tired. It was a rather strange feeling seeing his parents prepare the dinner in the kitchen. They seemed so happy doing things like these again. After all, the Kyubi rampage had changed so much. Naruto Kushina said happily. There was none of that nervousness that she showed when usually talking to him. Perhaps she was just happy to be here, cooking. She smiled to her son he was here. She was worried that he wouldn't show up for dinner. Time had been ticking away and it was late already. But Minato had said that he shouldn't worry. She was also worried Minato didn't get here as well. But he arrived. On the precise time. She was glad that he showed up as he promised. It would have been a disappointment. And Naruto would have been shattered. And nothing would have changed. And the bonds would have been broken. That they were trying to rebuild. They would have been only parents in name and nothing more. I am so glad you made it, she said with a happy smile. Minato nodded. I was beginning to worry, he said. Well, that hardly matters. Come, join us. I'd rather not, said Naruto. You know I have no skills when it comes to cooking. I'll just watch. You won't learn anything if you don't make the effort. Now come and try to dust Kushina's head with a smile. We are here. You won't make up dinner. And even if you do, we will still eat together like a family, she said. There was a firmness in her tone. She was obvious, not requesting, but telling him to join. That was a mother that he knew. His mother was a fierce woman that didn't show nervousness to a child. That he grew to know and love was stubborn, strong will and didn't back down so easily. Yet, even if this was a mother he'd grown to know, he did not feel happy. There was a strange feeling inside of him. He wanted nothing more than to put his hands on his chest and feel his heart beat. He should have been happy that they were putting the effort but he wasn't all that happy. It was strange. Perhaps a part of him was expecting his father not to be here because he was caught up in his work. Or perhaps a part of him was liking the way things are now and didn't want to go back to normal. If everything returned back to normal his desire, he would lose it. Even with all those thoughts, he smiled at his parents. Sure, why not? He to wait until he got his hands wet before he start with the casual talking. So, how was your day? The strange feeling did not go away. He didn't want to talk about this. Perhaps a couple months ago, but not now. It was interesting, he said. Well, that is good, said Minato. Meet anyone new, he asked. I wouldn't say new, but I did end up meeting with Itachi Uchiha. Uchiha Itachi, huh? Minato was rather subdued about it. He seemed to be thinking about something, but his mother was happy. She seemed excited. Mikato, oldest son, this is a good thing. I hope you strike a friendship with him. His mother tell me that he's a sweet child who loves his younger brother dearly. That was new. Nerd did not thought about sweet and love when it comes towards Itachi. He decided to add something. Speaking of younger siblings, where's Karen? Upstairs with Aizumi-chan, Kushina said. I couldn't fix dinner with her on my back. Naruto nodded. I will go check up on her, he said. As he turned away, as the both of them were smiling, happy that he made that choice. It has been so long since he went into the presence of his younger sister. Since her birth, he only saw her about three times. And over the past three months, he hasn't seen her once. They were starting to think that he resented her for everything. Karen was not in his parents' room though, as he went to check the other living room. As he saw Aizumi with Karen on her lap watching TV. Naruto Sama Aizumi said, Have you come for Karen Chan? Well, she's sleeping at the moment, but you can look at her. I'm sure that you'll miss how she looked like. She was just as he remembered. His little sister. His innocent little sister. Little girl that didn't know anything. She was innocent in all of these. Yes, she was. As Naruto looked at her for a full minute. Before he straightened himself up. All done, Aizumi asked. Naruto nodded. A cute little thing, isn't she? He thought to himself. I will be going back downstairs. You should just move in here. You hardly go home anyway. I'll consider that, Aizumi said. Take Karen Chan with you. Your mother wanted her to be there when you have your dinner. She said that she wanted everyone at the dinner table. As Nurt looked at his little sister, he had to hold her since that day when his mother was able to leave the house and it was like he hated her. He sighed as he spoke. Sure, why not? As Aizumi hand over the little girl. The movements made the baby stir before her eyes slowly opened. Her eyes the same as both his parents. She just stared at him. Naruto, is there something wrong? Aizumi asked. Naruto shook his head, there was nothing wrong. As he smiled warmly at the little girl in his arms. Hello, Karen Namikaze. I'm your older brother, Naruto Uzumaki. I hope you and I will get along when you learn to understand. Things are on you, he said. Time skip. Two days later, shock, surprise, amaze and awe. Itachi didn't know 
what expression to release as he just saw an amazing sight. Naruto said that he didn't know ninjutsu because he hadn't tried learning it before. What he was working on was his elemental natures. He didn't know all of them but his father did told that one of them was fire. What had surprised Itachi was that Naruto had executed the fireball jutsu on his first try as a redhead asked him for instructions and he released it. It was also slightly bigger than Itachi's and he incinerated the tree in his path. Perhaps his father was right the flames that Naruto used was not normal flames. As I suspected said Naruto as he did not seem happy that he just pulled off that technique so quickly. What Itachi said you don't even seem excited that you learned the jutsu. Seeing that I was very happy the time when I showed my father because I wanted to make him proud. Considering that making him proud is very difficult. Everyone would be surprised, even his father would be surprised when he told him what Naruto did today. As Naruto turned towards Itachi, no one would be happy for him because his parents didn't even know that he trained himself so hard to blood and sweat. This is a result of hard work. I'm not a genius like you. To make this a reality, I had to work hard. Go through pain to achieve this. I should be excited but in me there is a little voice that is telling me anything less would be a disappointment. It is right to be excited over this though. Nevertheless, this is what I expected of myself. You have high expectation, said Itachi. Well, he agreed. And even if he was a genius, he did work hard to get to where he is. As he acknowledged that he wasn't like the others and he took it a step further. He pushed himself as well. Yes, said Naruto. I have been learning how to control my chakra and the fire element for a long time. The harder part with ninjutsu is a hand science. But learn how to manipulate the chakra inside of you. You can control your chakra without much effort. It is quite easy to give it form. As Itachi, just learn something from the red head. When it comes to fighting, Naruto was highly knowledgeable. Are you saying that executing ninjutsu? You're merely giving your chakra form. Naruto nodded. Yes, that is what I'm saying. To use ninjutsu, you must have chakra. I've learned how to control my chakra. The second step was my elemental chakra. That led to the question, what was my natural affinity? Which was fire. That was amongst the foal. So I learned how to control my chakra and turn to the fire and freely control it. The third step is giving that fire a form. In your language, you can say ninjutsu. Itachi took at Naruto. That was truly a unique way to view things. He could understand why Naruto was able to execute the jutsu that way. He already have everything to do it. Why do you go about it that way, Itachi asks. Because I want to create new things, said Naruto. The shape that I will give to my chakra. I want it to be different. All great shinobis have something unique about them. I want it as well. He didn't want to just live in the shadow of his father. He wanted to achieve greatness in his life. Itachi looked up. Perhaps father was right. Associating with you would be good for me. As Naruto acted like he didn't hear Itachi as he sat down. He had things to keep to himself. He wasn't going to show Itachi everything. His clones were still doing training. Have you been approached by Danzo? Said Naruto. Itachi was a bit surprised. The way Naruto said it. Like he was as sure that Itachi knew who Danzo was. Well unsurprising Danzo probably approached him as well. Yes, Itachi said. Interesting as his offer was, my father warned me against him. Do you know what is really going on? No, I just know he's bad. At least that is what I was told. As Naruto thought about what the man did. Hold on to Aizumi like that. Despite not showing it, Naruto was furious. Once again, someone was trying to break down and humiliate him. But that will never ever happen again. He does dark things. That led him in trouble. Father said that he has committed treason in more than one occasion. But the third let him go. Things are a little different with your father though, said Itachi. Bad news then, said Naruto. Itachi nodded. Why are you trying to become powerful, Naruto? He asked. Over the past months, you have made a miraculous turnaround in your abilities. There has to be something driving you. What is it? Naruto tilted his head as he smiled. You ask a lot of questions, Itachi, he said. Is it wrong, Itachi said. I'm interested. I'm observing. Won't lead to answers. It will just lead to speculations. I want to know. I don't believe what you said in class today. Do you even have any thoughts of becoming Hokage? As Naruto simply shrugged his shoulders. Who knows, he said. But I'm rather selfish. What I do is not for someone else, but for myself. This is not for the benefit of anyone, but for me, he said. I normally wouldn't bother, but since you asked, what's your reason? I want to bring change, Itachi said. I want to protect this village. I want to protect my clan. I want the world to be a better place where there is no wars. Where people aren't killing each other for meaningless reasons. Naruto blinked as he tilted his head to the other side. That's a big load, he said. What do they call people like you? Oh well. It doesn't matter much anyway. As long as you remain in Kanoha, and I am of Kanoha, we will both serve the village at our best of abilities. The redhead was being honest. The first anniversary of the Kayubi Rampage is near. If Itachi was trying to get a reaction out of Naruto, he was disappointed because Naruto didn't even twitch. The day that changed my life and most people's life 
You and I are in similar situations, aren't we? Yes, Itachi says he got to his feet. I wish to see how good you are. I'd rather not, said Naruto. Let me rephrase, Itachi said. Today, you will show me how good you are, whether you like it or not. No, you can't, said Naruto. I can simply choose to defend until you tire yourself out. You don't really like being forced into battle, do you? Who oh, no, knows, said Naruto as he got to his feet. I guess I will have to engage as a thank you for showing me that Juta earlier. Don't you think? Not really. But I'll take it, Itachi said. Sometime later, Saruto became bound. It was a rare occasion for Naruto to be invited to have a chat with the third Okage. As in the past, Naruto had met up with the man in the tower and at his house. The old man was nice if Naruto could say nice. Naruto didn't really like old people, given his experience with Yoshino, but the third was different. Ah, Naruto can the third said the smile. As Naruto entered the small meeting hall, he was having a meeting recently and he didn't bother to leave. As Naruto sat down with a smile, a conversation with the third, Okagi, is always a pleasant thing. There are so many things I choose to ignore, but I've never been able to ignore the wisdom that comes from your mouth. The old man chuckled lightly. Believe who are experienced and age should always teach young the right ways. But of course, because we're young doesn't mean we're always right. What worked in the past won't work now. The world is always evolving. That's a bit too deep for me, said Naruto. He really didn't have time to be thinking about such things. He was still just a kid after all. The man looked curiously. What do you mean that's a bit too deep for you, naruto -kun? The third knew that Naruto knew many things. When he saw Naruto just after he was born, those look in his eyes, it looked like someone that would be spoke about through the entire elemental nation. But for that to happen, he had to stop some of his tendencies, like completely ignorant people. I don't delve that far into things, said Naruto. Perhaps it was his ignorance that made him. Why? The third asked. There's no reason for me to go that far. I know what I have to know. There's no use. Tomorrow things will be known tomorrow, when the time is right. Things don't work in that way, Naruto the third said. Why do you train so hard? It isn't for today, it's for tomorrow. If you go with that thought that you will think about that tomorrow, you've already evolved tomorrow. Why do you wish to train so hard if you already evolved the other day? As Naruto massaged his head, always a challenging talker, trying to confuse his mind to get him to reveal things, and always trying to make him think underneath the underneath. Power and knowledge are different things. I have come to understand that power isn't something you gain in the spot. It takes time to grow. That is why I have no expectations now. But in the near future, expectations will be there. You are correct about that. But that is the same with knowledge. Prepare for the future by training your body to make it withstand and be ready for what you are about to do with it. But when you don't know anything, you remain blind. Knowing now help you deal with things differently and you can come out on top. Say for example, if you know who Itachi was in the first place, you would have never agreed to engage him. But because you didn't know about him, you suffered that experience. Yes, suffering that experience may have helped you. But if you had known, you would avoid it. Some troubles are avoided by knowing. When you don't know, you easily fall into traps. Sometimes we will make it, but other times you will not. That makes sense, said Naruto, as he saw the logic that the third was talking about. I've never looked at it that way. Of course it does, the third said. You have experienced the situations that were better because you knew. This is why you must study life, present many challenges. But when you ignore those, you will fail at many. Like doing an exam per se, if you refuse the knowledge and do not study, you will fail. Despite being himself, Naruto nodded as he listened to the old man. As if he was someone else, he would have simply ignored them by now. He wanted to be great after all. Knowledge was needed for that. Well, they don't call you the professor for nothing, said Naruto. You can also be called by your title, your own title, Naruto. You have the chance, the resource, the energy to do so. My knowledge and my wisdom to apply for me in my prime. Power is great. Power with wisdom that can make you become a legend. As if the third saw Naruto's eyes, as Naruto was looking down, he knew that he hit the nail right on the spot. Legend. His father was a hero, but a legend was better than a hero. But he could do them both become a hero and a living legend. No, he was not going to set aside to be something great. He wanted to be a legend. Then you wouldn't be stuck behind anyone's shadow. Coming here was not the wrong choice, and his association with Tachi would surely benefit him. So I hear that you've been doing rather well in the academy. When I look at your file, I can't help but be impressed. Academy standards are nothing to be impressed about, said Naruto, as he waved it off. Oh, the third said. Naruto may not have said it out loud, but he had just revealed that it was more to his skills than he was like none. The old man really didn't know what Naruto could do. Even the Byakon could not see through the shield that he erected around himself. Then I can expect great things from you when you become a shinobi. Naturally, said Naruto. Anything less would be disappointed. Then I hope to be alive to see you when you reach your prime, as he was sure that he wouldn't. Have to wait too long with the situation that was going on outside the village. One wrong move in a war would spark. The third was sure of it. It made him frown to know that even this current generation would not be spared from the horrors of war. He just got over the third. 
But as they stood, another one would come once again. You will, said Naruto. How are things at home? The third said in a cautious tone. Naruto put on that fake mask. Fine. Did you hear something? He asked. Not recently. I hope things are well though. Well, let us get to the main reason why I called you here. As Naruto nodded, your parents haven't told you this, your generation. Doesn't really know anything that is going on outside the walls of Kanoha. Itachi Uchiha, you've been spending time with him, yes? As Naruto nodded, as the man continued, his father does not shield him from the reality occurring outside of the village. I know you're still young, but you must know. At this rate, you're going to be a shinobi soon, the third said. By a year, Itachi and Naruto wouldn't be fit for the academy. They were already growing at an exponential rate. Itachi would go. But the third was sure that Minato wouldn't want his son to be a shinobi at such a young age. He would have little options though. The rest of the villagers and shinobis looked up to the Hokage. If something happened now, Minato was going to act because how would parents feel if the Hokage could not send his son into battle if they could? That was the unfortunate situation he found himself in. This is why the third was preparing Naruto mentally. Both Kumo and the stone are intimidating our shinobi. We can no longer send anyone below the Joni rank outside the borders of Fire Country. Some have gone and not returned. Because we don't have proof over anything, we can't do anything. As Naruto closed his eyes, Kumo and the stone, where did he hear about those two villages? Ah yes, they were two great hidden villages, with each of them possessing a biju. Two, to be exact. Ah, uh, troublesome, he said. Although he did not get the full picture, he acted like he did. Things are that difficult, huh? The third nodded. There is also something that affects you directly. During the third Shinobi World War, your father made a lot of enemies. This village loved you. Imagine a whole village. As Konoha, how to get you, and really passionate about as well. That was a clear enough picture for Naruto to understand. He knew that his life would be in danger if he went outside the village and merely. He put on his mask. I see. Then all the more reason to train harder, he said with a smile. The third was a bit unnerved. Even after all he just said, Naruto was still smiling. Time skip. As both Minato and the third was in the office. I will deal with him, said the third. You handle a situation outside the village. Would not let him get his grabs on Naruto or Itachi. You handle the situation that is outside and I'll handle the one that is inside. The third said, The situation isn't becoming favorable. I will trust you on that, said Minato. Bye. Your concern. He has made a move on Itachi as well. The third nodded. Fukaku wouldn't be pleased by that. He's very protective of his son getting influenced by outside forces. Yes. What about Naruto? Minato frowned. I have offered him my help, but he doesn't ask me anything. He asks his mother about uses of chakra, chains, and some other things, but he hasn't asked me a single thing. Don't let it bother you too much, Minato-kun. It's not that he doesn't want your help, it is that he doesn't want to be like you. For all his short life he has been living in your shadow, he probably doesn't want to end up learning things from you because that will still leave him in your shadow. What he wants is to surpass you on his own. He wants to be greater than you. Take heart in that, my own son has no desire to be greater than I am. But your son respect your skills and wishes to surpass all of that. You should be happy. But I want to help him. It made him happy that his son wanted to surpass him. But he wants to be a part of that growth and development. I know. But at this stage, you can only give him support and give him some pointers. If you speak to him, he will listen to you. There are some people that he don't listen to. But you, he will listen. You are still his father. I will try that, said Minato. Before I forget, the reason I came here informed Naruto what has been going on are in the elemental nation. You know things better than anyone close to him. So he will come to you because of his ignorance. Minato didn't seem happy about that though. Kushna wouldn't be pleased. It's alright, said the third. It won't change anything in young Naruto. It would only influence him to stop being ignorant and train harder. How did he take it? asked Minato. Harrison frowned. With a smile, he said. Time skip. Ozumaki Library. As Aizumi was surprised as Naruto's behind the decks with reading material that wouldn't help him with his training. The only thing that he read was things that would help him at the academy. And he's training, but this was none of the two. And not to mention he looked quite bored. Normally, when he found something bored, he did not go through it. He just put it to the other side. You're looking through the history of our clan, she said. No, if you had paid attention when I was teaching you these things, you wouldn't be going through them now. I didn't want to know back then, said Naruto. But it has become apparent that this clan will remain a part of my life, whether I like it or not. I will have to know everything I have to know as here, as was my clan. What brought this up, she asked. People never stop learning. I'm no different. I'll still ignore some things, but something must be known. The third did say something that brightened my vision. The history is rather long, but nothing really entertaining like the Uchiha's or the Senjus. We have always have a history of peaceful and no fighting. Of course, the history won't be the same as the Senjus and Uchiha's. You don't want to be clan do you? She asked. I don't really know, he said. 
Itachi has his clear dreams. He loves the village's clan and eventually he will take the clan head position from his father to protect the village and his clan. You want to be like that? She asks. Nurka snorted. I am me. We all can't wish for the same things. The Uzumakis will remain by my side. But the desire, the true dream will not change. Being clan head will represent freedom from me and will elevate my status. It is all my selfish desires. Nevertheless, the clan must be taken care of. There is no one that can do that besides me. Then, are you going to start to take your role seriously? Have you just met me, Nurka asked the blank look on his face. My dream will come first before anything, and I will ignore what I don't need. Responsibilities pushed onto me is a chore. I will handle those things when time come. For now, let me be a kid. Aizumi shook her head. He wanted to be a kid when it was, well, fun for him. Hm. Uzumaki Naruto was surely a strange enigma. Well, it doesn't matter. She would be by his side no matter what. This was a job that she had taken for life. Your mother was asking for you. My mother is always asking about me. What does she want? Her son. I'm available once a week. I don't really have the time, said Naruto. Really, things were just awkward between him and his parents. They could never return to the past glory. He has changed. He was no longer that person. He was someone who dreams now, and he wouldn't stop until they achieved them. Is it really that uncomfortable? I just don't know how to act around them. They are trying. I understand that. But things cannot return to the way they were. They have to accept that. Or else their attempts would someday become annoying. An annoyance that would drive him out of the Uzuma compound. Yoshino would no doubt try to have his head if he did something like that. Then again, he wouldn't care if he does become a shinobi soon. He would be able to afford his own living arrangements. He would try that just to feel the freedom of being independent. Aizumi sighed as she looked towards him. Yoshino said that she wanted to see you. To see how far you have progressed in Fujutsu. She wants to meet with you by tomorrow evening. That will not work, said Naruto. I really don't have the time to list her brutality. The old hag can wait all she likes, but I will not see her. I am rather capable of avoiding her. What will happen the day she catches you? I will deal with it then, for now. You didn't say anything. As long as she doesn't know where I am, she won't find me. And even though things are, she won't go to my mother to ask. Mother would probably give her some choices of words. You may be on the safe side, but I will start to face her. You do not have to listen to her. She is not your boss or anything. I am your master. She can go back to Uzo for all I care, he said. Was there anything else? No, Aizumi said. It was just a message. But guys, the end tips are right here. If you want the next person to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they posted. Remember to share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Was Neglected and Lost Everything over an Anime King 2. And enjoy that, guys. And remember, if you're new, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be reporting and talking back to all of you. So yeah, I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace.